From the spring for alpaca that everyone seems to love to death, to the elusive fathom dweller, to even the long forgotten hippogriff from Legion. Today I'm here to bring you a video with 20 easy to get mounts. What's up whalings and welcome back to a brand new video. First off, I want to say that this video is a bit of a spiritual successor to my video from a couple years back, 60 plus easy to get mounts. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out for an extra chunk of mounts that you might not have. If you enjoy this video as you watch it, make sure to smack that like button and leave a comment letting me know if you have any questions or just how much the video helped you. As it turns out, a whopping 98.9% .9 of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed. So if you'd like to help that out and be part of the 1%, make sure to get subscribed and ring that bell. It really helps support the channel a lot when you do, especially with longer and more difficult videos to make like this one. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later, no questions asked. Anyway, that said, let's go ahead and get started. The first couple are a little bit more time consuming, but I wanted to go ahead and point them out at the beginning of this video since they both involve dailies and can't really be skipped or done easily in one day. So make sure to start these if you're interested before you head off to the rest in this video. The first one will be the Shadow Barb Drone. As of the time of recording this video, I actually don't have this one because it takes a moderately long time to get, but it's very low effort over that time. To start off, head to Uldum. Make sure you're in the Nazathified version. If you're not in that version, you can talk to Zidormi in Ramka Hen to switch you over. There's a prerequisite, however, that you have unlocked Uldum Assaults, which just requires you to do introductory quests for the Visions of Nazoth patch. Anyway, once you're there, you'll need to head to the coordinates on screen. There you should see the Void Touched Egg. Right click it and pick up the incredible egg. Then head back to Ram Kahan. You'll have a golden question mark for Hipartho Ardoros. You can turn in the incredible egg to him, then wait for some roleplay. After that, he'll have a quest for you, match the hatch. Pick that up and go do that. After you do that, you're done for the day on this mount. Come back each day for around 30 days and do a different quest each day and you'll earn the Shadow Barb drone mount. There's several different dailies you can get, and sometimes there's a normal quest you have to do, but by the end of about 30 days you should be good to go. Also in the later stages, there are some pet battles you have to do. I'll link to a wowhead guide for the Visions of Nazoth legendary pet battle strategies, and that should point you in the right direction on what battle pets to use. I wanted to show off the mount with my own character, but as of this time, I'm only at day 10. Moving on to the Spring for Alpaca. Yes, yes, I know you lo Yes, I know you love the alpacas, okay? Let's get started on it. The first thing you'll need to do is head to the Nazothified Olden. You may already be there from the Shadow Barb Drone bit above, which is good because it makes this a bit easier. Anyway, once you're there, what you'll need to do is head to this river. All along the riverside, you'll find these plants which drop the Gersol greens. You'll want to look around and find seven of them total. You don't need herbalism to gather the herb but it does make it much easier to find them as they'll show up on your minimap if you have herbalism. Any which way, they'll look like this. Once you get these greens is when the daily part begins, which is a bit annoying, but if you love alpacas, yes, I know you love alpacas. It's worth it because this is the easiest of the new alpacas to get. I'll have a list of coordinates in the description for you for an NPC in Oldham called the Friendly Alpaca. You'll need to go to Oldham and paste these waypoints in using something like the add-on TomTom, of course, and maybe with the add-on paste because it makes it a bit easier. Continue listening because there's some other ways of finding it, but I'll explain the waypoint thing first. Once you have those waypoints in, you can start flying to them and looking for the friendly alpaca. Once you find it, just turn in one of the Gersel greens and you're done for the day. You'll need to continue this for six additional days and you'll get your mount on that seventh day. It has an annoying spawn though, so be prepared to search for a bit. I've gotten a lot of mixed information online, but from what I understand, he stays up for five or ten minutes until despawning and respawns after five or ten minutes as well. It's best to assume the worst here and expect it to be up for 5 minutes at a time and down for 10 minutes at a time. This could be either really quick to find or really long. For the first 3 days, I found it solo in less than about 5 minutes. The 4th and 5th days, it took me about 20 minutes to find it each time, and on the 6th day, it took me and a group of 12 other players about 15 minutes to get it. Then my last day, I literally found it at the first waypoint. It's incredibly hit or miss. But that neatly brings me to the other couple of ways of finding it. While searching for it, something that can be key in saving you some time is the group finder. While you are searching, periodically search the group finder for friendly, and if you're fortunate and not doing this at 4 in the morning, you'll come across a group who is either searching for it or has already found it. Granted, this is only the case while the mount is relevant, so this is probably temporary until Shadowlands comes out. Additionally, something worth noting is that you can actually complete this quest while in a raid. In case you don't know, most quests cannot have progress completed while you are in a raid for some reason. They made an exception for this though. Another thing is to keep an eye on general chat for people announcing its location. This doesn't happen often, but in the event that it does, it can really save some time.
Moving on from there, let's go for an incredibly easy one to get. Boss Gear Seahorse. Feel free to skip this one if you only care about mounts you can use anywhere, as this one can only be used in this zone, Voss Gear. But this video aims to also please players who are trying to collect the highest quantity of mounts toward their mount collection achievements. This one can be a little wonky to get if you're already 110 or higher. First, what we're going to do is get Hero's Call, Voss Gear if you're Alliance, or War Chief's Command, Voss Gear if you're Horde. To get this, you'll need to head to a Hero's Call board if you're Alliance, or a War Chief's Command board if you're Horde. However, you may have a different zone on here like I did, like Mount Hyjal. If that's the case, you can pick it up, then check the board again. Once you find Vashir, head over to turn that in to Recruiter Barnes or Commander Thorak, depending on your faction. Now, ideally, you may have the quest Call of Duty available here. I did not. Any various number of stupid things may be preventing you from seeing the quest as well. For instance, for my character, it turned out that the Battle for Azeroth intro quest was blocking me from seeing it. So I had to go do that before getting started with Call of Duty. Anyway, once you fix your phasing, come back here and pick up Call of Duty. He'll just straight up teleport you to the place of your faction in Kelptar Forest, or you'll have to do a little roleplay event before being taken there. From there, there's a few quests for Alliance and a few for Horde. They're mostly the same thing, just different factions. Basically, just complete quests until you've fought off some Naga and have been taken captive, and Aranox Stonespeaker sets you free. At this point, both factions should be at the same point, which is where you'll do Better Late Than Dead. Then, the Abyssal Ride. Completing this series of quests, you'll have the Vostier Seahorse, which does count toward your mountain collection counts, but unfortunately you can only ride it in Vostier. Also to be clear, something I learned while doing this video is that it only counts towards your mountain collection counts if you unlocked it on that character. If you want multiple characters to count it, you'll have to unlock it on all of them. What's that? You like seahorses? What's that? You don't like Vostier? And you like other zones? Then have I got good news for you. The Subdued Seahorse, aka Pesitis, is a mount that looks identical to the Vostier Seahorse, albeit maybe a bit more ill and you can use it in any zone as long as you're underwater. It drops from a rare mob named Pesitis, who fortunately is in Vostier, which means you can ride the Vostier Seahorse over to his spawn points to check for him. He only spawns in a few locations in Shimmering Expanse and one location in Abyssal Depths. He does not spawn in Kelptar Forest, so we're going to head over to the Shimmering Expanse and the coordinates for where to check should be on screen and in the description. Once you check there, if he's there, then good! Demonetize him and collect your mount. If he's not, make sure to head over to Abyssal Depths to check the final location. Coordinates for that should also be on screen and in the description. The same method for acquiring the mount once you find him still applies. Usually, no one is in these zones, so it's generally pretty easy to come by this rare. There is an off chance that you won't find it, however. He is on an 8 hour spawn timer from what I've read online. Worst case scenario, you can always switch to war mode to see if he's up in a different phase. Next up, we'll be moving on to the first of a few secret mounts, the Fathom Dweller. It's an aquatic mount just like the last two, but it's a little more jellyfish y. With this mount and a couple of other secret mounts in this video, I want to say thank you to the Warcraft Secrets Finding Communities. They did the heavy lifting for figuring these things out, I'm just here offering a guide on how to get a few of them. I'm not sure how they relate to each other or if they do, but links to the Warcraft Secret Finding Discord server and to the Warcraft Secret site will be in the description. Anyway, the first thing you're going to do is head to the Broken Shore in the Broken Isles. Once you're there, head to the coordinates on screen to find Drakthul. Talk with him until he tells you now go away. Once you get to that point, head to the next set of coordinates on screen, still in Broken Shore. Head into this opening, then into this cave. At the back you'll find a dirt mound which is a little difficult to see. It has some roots sticking out of it. Open that up and loot the weathered relic held within. Head back out of the cave then back to Drakthul. Talk with him a moment about the relic. Then talk with him again, then again until he spits out some Lovecraftian profanities, then keep talking until he doesn't have any more dialogue options. Then you're ready to go on to a treasure hunt. We're going to head to Azuna, then head to the coordinates on screen. There will be a hidden cave under the roots of the tree. Head in there and right click this hungering orb in the fountain. After that, I'm going to run a command that tells me the progress on the secret. The command for this will be in the description down below. Anyway, with the first orb out of the way, we're going to head to the second one. We'll head to Stormheim for this one, and it'll be on the coordinates on screen. You'll find a red tree with a secret cave underneath it. Head in there. I made the mistake of attacking the boss that is inside, but feel free to skirt around him because he's a bit difficult even at level 120, and he responds instantly. Demonetizing him is not necessary for this mount. Anyway, activate the next orb. Onto Valshra, head to the coordinates on screen now. 
Again, you'll find a tree with a secret cave underneath. Inside the cave, there's a secret entrance to a deeper bit of the cave, which I only noticed because of the nameplate above an enemy's head in there. Head in there and feel free to game in the elemental, but the next orb is on plate in the back. Next, we're headed back to the broken shore out in the water. There's a cave in a bit of a tricky location here, which when you enter it, you'll have to be careful of these steam geysers, as they do a ton of damage, even at level 120. But anyway, head to the back of the cave and activate the orb under the tent. Then we're going to head back to Azuna. There's a cave here, which is a little difficult to see, but head in. You should see Stilagosa in here. Then over to some crystals, you should see the next orb in this metal casing thing. For the next one, we're going straight across the continent to the coordinates on screen under the continent of Broken Isles. If you have difficulty getting the waypoint set up, just follow where I go on screen. Once you're here, there should be a toothless great white shark in front of a cave which you can enter. Follow the route I take and you should get into it easily. In the cave there are some more geysers. Head on to the little landmass in the cave and activate that next orb. Then we're headed to High Mountain. There's a secret cave here which, when entered, there is an orb and a reptile skull. Right click it. Next we'll be headed back to Azuna again. There's yet another secret cave here. When you enter, head back to this little bush thing and right click the orb underneath. Then we're headed off to the coast of the Eye of Ashara. Head out there then under the water to find a shipwreck. There's a bit of a difficult path to follow to get to the orb, so make sure you either follow along with me or bring a water breathing potion or both. Head under this opening through the bush, through this hole, then through this one, over this piece of wood, then down, and under this beam. Then there's a secret cave even behind all that through a bush. Head through that and we can find the orb and a flat area of water in the back of the cave. Then we'll head back to Drakthul. On his desk will be the last orb. Activating it, he'll flip out and start saying some stuff. Talk to him and he'll tell you to go away. Then after that, you'll have access to a world quest on the Eye of Ashara called Danger Kazumoth the Hungerer. This will either reward you the Fathom Dweller mount or a Hungering Claw Battle Pet. If it's the mount, head over there and grab it while you can. If not, you'll have to wait until it is. The world quest is on a two week cooldown and when it pops up, it has a chance to award you either the mount or the battle pet. And if it's the pet one week, that doesn't mean it will be the mount the next cycle. So keep checking every couple of weeks till it pops. If you don't want whatever's up, no worries, just don't do it. Stay a while and listen. Got time for another secret? Up next is the Riddler's Mindworm. This one will take about 30 to 90 minutes to get, but it's guaranteed. Basically, in order to get this mount, you'll have to read eight different pages throughout the world that are a bit hidden. I'll guide you along the route to find them all. Again with this secret mount, thanks to the Warcraft secret finding communities. Links to their sites are in the description down below for those who have skipped here without seeing the previous one. While reading these pages, you can check your progress along the way with a script I'll leave in the description. It'll tell you what pages you're missing. Though this tells you which page in the order, not which page by number. In other words, the first page is page 1 instead of what it's called, which is page 9. The first one will be in the Legion Dalaran. That is, the one that is in Broken Isles and not Northrend. You'll head into the Ledger Domain's Lodge and find page 9 on a bookshelf in the back. Right click it to read it and we'll be ready to move on to the next one. You'll want to head to Duskwood for this one in the center area of the map and find this moon well. On the bench by it you'll find page 78. Right click that to read it. Then we'll head to the Firelands in Mount Hyjal. Once you get there head in and take out all the bosses between you and Ragnaros. This includes Shenox, who only spawns if you take out enough of the trash mobs in the zone and blocks you from entering the area needed to get to Ragnaros. Anyway, once you get to Ragnaros, ignore him and head over to the left side next to this brazier. Next to this spike next to the brazier will be page 161. Read that and we'll be headed to the next one. The next one will be in Oldham. It is specifically in the old version of Oldham, so make sure you switch back to that. You can head to the coordinates on the screen to find page 655, which you can then read. Then you'll be able to head to the next page. Head to Pandaria to enter the Siege of Orgrimmar. You'll need to head to the room for the Shaw of Pride. You don't have to take the Shaw out if you don't want to, but head over into this corner of the room as you can see on screen, noting the minimap, and you'll see page 845. Read it and we can move on to the Well of Eternity. For the next one you'll have to head into the dungeon Well of Eternity. 
and make your way all the way to the last boss of the dungeon, Manoroth. Then you'll want to head to this specific spot on the map and look for page 1127 and read that. After that you'll head to Kunlai Summit where you can find the statue and when you check between its feet you'll see page 2351 which you can now read. Then we'll be headed back to the old version of Oldham. Again the old version of Oldham, not the new Nizothified one. And head to the location on screen and find page 5555. Read it, then you're done with the reading, and we can head to this location in Westfall for the mount. Open this chest called Gift of the Mind Seekers, and contained within will be your Riddler's Mindworm. Click that and use it to add the mount to your collection. Moving on from the Riddler's Mindworm, we have a set of four mounts which are locked to a certain zone, much like the Vastier Seahorse. Even worse than that one, these are locked to a specific raid actually. That's the Kiraji Battle Tanks from the Temple of Ankiraj. Feel free to skip on these if you only care about generally usable mounts, but if you wish to pad your mount collection count, these little buggers will help you do that as they do count toward it. For these you'll want to head to the raid Temple of Ankiraj, as I already suggested above. Offing trash mobs in this raid will give you about a 10% chance at a drop of the blue Kiraji Battle Tank, the green one, or the yellow one. These should be relatively quick to collect. I got all three while recording for this just on trash mobs at the entrance of the raid. There is an additional one though which has a lower drop rate which is the red Kiraji battle tank. While it's still easy it does take quite a bit longer than the others as it has around a 1% drop chance. If you want to try a fun little game count the number of times you unalive a mob which can drop this mount and see how many it takes. When you see the number just think about the fact that this mount has the same chance to drop from these trash mobs as most mounts like Invincible's Reigns or Ashes of Alar have to drop from their respective bosses. While all the mounts on this list are easy to get, some are clearly less straightforward than others. There's a little bit more effort involved in the secret mounts, so let's go ahead and move on to some cut and dry especially easy ones. For the next few we're going to be hunting down the Warlords of Draenor rares which drop mounts. These mobs have a moderately long respawn timer so if you don't see them around don't bother waiting around for them for now. The best you can do are one of two things, either come back another time, probably a day later, or also try coming back with war mode turned on, or off, whatever is the opposite of your norm. Switching war mode will actually switch you to a different phase as well which could cause the mobs to be there. There's usually no one farming these mounts so if you usually aren't in war mode and enter it for this, you shouldn't have to worry about being attacked. Additionally, I have an add-on which marks their locations on the map. You don't have to use this and you can just use the coordinates I provide, but if you do want to use the add-on, it's called Handy Notes with the extra add-on Handy Notes for Draenor Treasures. That said, let's go ahead and rapid fire through these mounts since they're all the same thing, just in different places. Next up, I'll talk about the Swift Breeze Strider, which is a beautiful HD tall buck. For this one, you're going to want to head to the Warlords of Draenor version of Shadowmoon Valley. Once there, you'll want to set up waypoints for the following coordinates, which will of course be in the description. Head to each of the coordinate sets and look for a mob called Pathrunner. Unaliving it will give you the Swift Breeze Rider mount. I'm not doing so here though as it is a long respawn timer and I don't want to prevent anyone else from getting it as I already have it. With that long respawn timer in mind, do note that people usually are not coming here anymore so this spawn as well as the next few mounts aren't being camped usually so they're almost always up. Also, all the Draenor rare mounts mentioned are 100% drop chance. After the Swift Breeze Rider, we can head north to Gorgron to look for Poundfist. He has a few spawn points which are kind of all over the place but can all be checked relatively quickly. The coordinates for each point should be on screen for him now. Demonetizing Poundfist will give you the Sunhide Gronling. Let's head to Frostfire Ridge where we'll find two mounts again, although with very different spawns. The first one is Gorok who is a gigantic grey Draenor style boar. Finding him and ending his existence will grant you a mount. Great Greytusk. Possibly one of the ugliest mounts I've seen in the game in my opinion, but to each their own. Anyway, from there, let's move on to Not Karash. The reason I said their spawns are quite different is because this guy respawns very quickly after demonetization. From what I have seen and heard, it is about 15 to 30 minutes for respawn. Ending him, you'll get the mount Garn Night Howl, which is a Warlords of Draenor styled wolf slash warg mount. The interesting thing about this one though is that you can actually sell or buy the mount on the auction house. It's quite cheap to do so as well. On My Realm's Auction House, it is 700 to 3500 gold depending on the time you search. From there, before moving on, I want to point out there are three other Draenor rares which drop mounts 100% of the time, 
but from what I've been able to see while checking for them, they seem to be camped a lot more often than the other mounts I mentioned. These are as follows. Siltahide spawns at the coordinates on screen in Talador. Unaliving him will give you the Sapphire River Beast. Lookhawk spawns at the coordinates on screen in Nagrand. Offing him, you should receive the modeled Meadow Stumper. Knack the Thunderer also spawns in Nagrand at these coordinates. Game ending Knack will grant you the mount Bloodhoof Bull. Alright, let's return to Sacred Mounts for a moment. Or a few. The next mount we'll be going over is the Smoldering Ember Worm. For this one, we're going to head to the Legion Dungeon, return to Karazhan, specifically on the Mythic Difficulty. When you head there, make sure you hear this out before opening the door in the instance. The steps are as follows. First, make sure you are on Mythic Difficulty, as I said before. Next, open the door once you get in the dungeon. This will start an 8 minute timer with a message in your chat, the strange chill of a dark presence winds through the air. Next, head to the playroom and take out whatever boss is there for you. It can be one of several different bosses. Anyway, once you get done with that, head through the door on the opposite side of the stage and head around through to the audience room. The first crystal will be in the center. Activate it. Next, head to the back of the audience and head through to this room with the maidens. You can follow the route I take. And activate the second crystal there. Next, you'll want to head to the room with the Moreau's. Body him and activate the third crystal. Next, we're headed down to some spiders, where we'll take them out and activate the fourth crystal. Next, follow the route I take, or if you're familiar with the dungeon, whatever route you want, but to get to the curator. Demonetize him and you can activate the fifth and final crystal. From here, you'll have five minutes to follow the route I do to find the Shade of Medivh. Once you get there, talk to him. After a roleplay scene, Nightbane will spawn. Ending Nightbane, you can loot him. He has a weird chance of dropping the Smoldering Ember Worm, but I'll try to explain it now. To the point for solo, just know that if you solo this, there's a 20% chance to get the mount, or a 1 in 5 chance. Very high odds, at least relative to mount drops. If you're able to run with friends, I'd advise doing that, especially if you can get a group of 4 friends who can commit to helping each other get it over the next few weeks. Or over a couple of characters if you have multiple 120 characters. Here's how it works for that. This is coming from Blizzard CS, or in other words, Blizzard themselves. The mount has a 20% drop chance multiplied by the number of loot eligible players, even if the loot eligible players have the mount. However, the mount will only drop for someone who doesn't have the mount. For example, 5 players who are not loot locked means there is a 100% chance for the mount to drop for someone who doesn't already have the mount. 4 players who are not loot locked, plus 1 player who is loot locked is an 80% chance for the mount to drop. 4 players who are not loot locked and have the smoldering ember worm plus one not loot locked player without the smoldering ember worm means a 100% chance the player without the smoldering ember worm will get the mount. Four players who are not loot locked and have the smoldering ember worm mount plus one loot locked player without the smoldering ember worm is a 0% chance to get the mount, as the only person who could get it already is loot locked. 
four loot locked players plus one not loot locked player, none of whom have the mount, is a 20% drop chance and it can only drop for the non loot locked player. Simplified to an extent anyway, if you have five people who don't have the mount and they do this, you have a 100% chance for one of the people getting it. And following runs of the dungeon with those same people, maybe with different characters or at a later time, there is still a 100% drop chance, but it can only drop for one of the four players who do not have the mount. And so on with three, and so on with two, and so on with the last person. Up next is the Infernal Direwolf. This mount is a bit more of a mental effort to get than a lot of the others, but with today's level of gear it should be relatively easy as far as actual execution goes. This comes from the Warlords of Draenor Completionist achievement, Glory of the Hellfire Raider. Since it is such a large thing, I'll link to my guide on how to do that in the card at the top right now, or if you like, you can check the description down below. Anyway, moving on, we have the long forgotten Hippogriff. One last time, a big thanks to the Warcraft Secrets Finding communities. Links to their sites are in the description for those who may have skipped here without seeing the previous ones. This is going to be a bit of a test of your patience, but it's worth it. This mount is kind of weird to get because it's a secret mount, but it can be gotten in 15 to 60 minutes, depending on how fortunate you are with the spots you check and where the gems you have to get end up being. Before doing anything, this is going to be basically impossible to do without using the add-ons TomTom and Paste to put in waypoints so you can find them. I'll have those linked below. Also in the description will be links to two sites. One will be for a site called worldofpunks.com, which is a bit of an odd URL, but it's basically a site where information has been compiled about this mount. On that site you'll find a list of waypoints on the right side, which I'll explain in a moment. Also, though this isn't why the link is there, you can also find the links to TomTom Tom and Paste on there as well at the top. The other link will actually be to something linked to from that site, which is a paste bin of those same waypoints. I'll link to that as well just to make sure that if anything ever happens to that site, the waypoints will still be available. Anyway, once you've got the add-ons installed and you've gotten the waypoints, you'll want to head to Azuna in the Broken Isles. Open paste by either clicking the button by your minimap or type into chat slash paste show. Once this dialog pops open, you'll want to copy all of the waypoints out of that site or off the pastebin page. Then paste them in the box. From World of Punks, you should see it says at the bottom 110 lines with something around 5,763 characters. From the paste bin, you should see 114 lines with something around 6,011 characters. I'm not sure why the distinction, but the paste bin has four additional waypoints, which I'll have on screen and in the description down below. If you want to, just add those manually or in addition to the other ones. Anyway, you can hit paste and close now, and open your map, and oh boy look at all those dots. Okay, now before you head to them, I'll explain how acquiring the mount works. Basically, at any time, there may or may not be crystals up in the zone, depending on if anyone has done this yet in that phase of the zone. And by that phase of the zone, I mean these things could affect which phase you're in. Whether or not an invasion is ongoing, whether or not you are in war mode, what realm or realm cluster you are on. If you want the best results, you'll want to do this during an invasion with war mode on and on a low population server. Which, if you don't have any characters on low population servers, that's fine, you should be able to create a class trial character on a server and get them out with that character. That being said though, I got it on my server which is Emerald Dream, which is a medium to high population server with no problem during an invasion with war mode on. Granted, I also did it around 4 in the morning, so results may vary. From what I understand, after someone gets the mount, there is about a 3 to 12 hour time before you can get it again. That said, the way you get it is by going to the various waypoints you entered and checking for these things called ephemeral crystals and right clicking them. Once you find one, that means you know for sure it is possible to get one right now. That said, in the event that anyone else is trying to get the mount while you are, you have to find 5 of the crystals before anyone else does. If someone else finds it before you, you'll see a message in your chat which says you hear a faint caw in the distance, and then silence. If that happens, that means someone else got it, and you'll have to go look for it another time or in another phase. That said, as I suggested, you'll want to find 5 of these crystals in the zone, and they should be at one of the waypoints mentioned earlier. Once you find the 5th and final crystal, the long forgotten hippogriff will spawn in front of you, and the mount will be added to your inventory. You can right click it and it will be added to your mount collection. I realize this was a lot of information, so feel free to go back to this timestamp if you want to restart this section as needed. Otherwise, I'll move on to the next mount. The next mount you can go for that's relatively easy is... kind of a rolling one, but it's the Brawler's Guild mount. The Brawler's Guild kind of comes and goes and with it different mounts become available. 
For Pandaria, it's the Brawler's Burly Mushan Beast. Warlords of Draenor didn't have one as it had other rewards available. Legion had the Brawler's Burly Basilisk. Battle for Azeroth had Bruce. I wasn't making videos for this channel when the Brawler's Burly Mushan Beast was current, nor did I ever even unlock that, but I made a guide on how to get the Brawler's Burly Basilisk when that was current, and I've made a guide on how to get Bruce. I'll link to the Bruce guide in the card as well as the description down below, but so long as I'm making guides for World of Warcraft and there's a new version of the Brawler's Guild out, I'll be making guides on how to complete it, which presumably will also entail whatever mount is available if one is available. Something worth noting, the Brawler's Guilds are usually incredibly difficult to do as soon as they're made available unless you're a high-end player, but as time passes, they become incredibly easy because of outgearing them. If you want to stick around for those guides or whatever else kind of content I make, be sure to get subscribed and hit that bell to stay notified of future uploads. In the event that I stop making guides eventually, you can always check on Wowhead or Google for whatever the latest Brawler's Guild has to offer for you. I don't imagine them taking this feature out as a lot of players tend to really enjoy it. Anyway, the next mount I'll be featuring today is one that a lot of current players as of the time of this video's release already have, but I want to make sure future players know about it too. That's the Mechanocat Laser Pointer which summons the X995 Mechanocat. In order to get this, you'll need to get into the Mechagon Zone. If you've already done the introductory quests for Mechagon, then all you need to do is head over there for the next part. Skip to the timestamp on screen if you have. If you haven't, then here's what you need to do to get there. First, make sure you're level 120 or higher. This may be level 50 after Shadowlands releases. Then make sure you're at least friendly with all the reputations of your faction's continent, be that Kul'Tiris or Zandalar. Complete the quest Uniting Kul'Tiris for the Alliance or Uniting Zandalar for Horde, which is a follow-up quest to the quest A Mission of Unity, which you should get automatically upon entering your faction's capital at 120. Again, or 50 if it's in Shadowlands. Complete the Depths of Nazjatar storyline, which involves heading to Nazjatar, setting up a base there, and creating a portal back to your capital. Complete the Empowering the Heart storyline, which will have you talking with Magni and being introduced to the Heart Forge. This will also award you the achievement, the Heart Forge. Once you complete this, head back to Nazjatar and follow your main story quests until you unlock world quests in Nazjatar. Next, head to your faction's capital to the primary flight point, which is here in Boralus for the Alliance, and here in Dazar Alor for Horde. Next to your flight master should be a gnome named Tinkmaster Overspark if you're Alliance, or a goblin named Gazlo if you're Horde. That NPC should have a quest called The Legend of Mechagon. Follow through that quest. Follow through the quests until you unlock Pascal King, Junkyard Training, and the recipe for the Mechanocat Laser Pointer. Once you're at this point, you can now collect the resources to craft it. The resources are 8 spare crates, 5 energy cells, and 4 chain igniter coils. Basically, all of these can be gotten in an evening or two of quests, world quests, and fighting stuff on Mechagon. The first item, 8 spare crates, are crafted at Pascal King for 250 spare parts each, so you'll need 2,000 total. The best source of these I found after doing all the quests and world quests available was to actually fight with a group of random people in Junkwat Depot. If you have a good group of people, you can easily get the 2,000 quickly. However, don't do this until you have the other parts, as the other parts are a lot more difficult to get relatively speaking. Cork Stuttgart in Bondo's Yard sells a couple items on limited stock, though I wouldn't advise buying them. They can be quite pricey. The chain igniter coil coming in at 35,000 gold, which you need four of. Anyway, I also wanted to mention that the chain igniter coils can also come from missions on your mission table. I'm not sure about the other resources, but I know that can at least, as I got two that way. But go ahead and gather all your resources over a day or two maybe, and craft them out here. Up next we have some I'm actually amazed I hadn't known about sooner. That's the writing axe. If we head to Kunlai Summit, we can head to the coordinates on screen and find Uncle Big Pocket. Talking to him, we can buy the reins of the gray riding yak and the reins of the blonde riding yak, each costing 3,000 gold. Also, while I wouldn't describe it as an easy mount, this is also where you get the Grand Expedition yak here, but that's 120,000. Next is probably going to be the easiest one because it comes passively. That's the Albino Drake. If you follow the rest of this guide for 20 some odd mounts as well as my other guide for 60 some odd other mounts, you should easily be able to clear 50 mounts, which is what's needed for the achievement leading the cavalry. That achievement awards you the Albino Drake mount.
All right, that's the last mount I'm going to be covering today. Did you enjoy the video? Have any feedback for me? How many new mounts did this help you to get? Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and after that, leave a comment letting me know what you think. If you didn't like the video, the other button works too. Anyway, like I mentioned earlier, a whopping 98.9% .9 of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed. So if you'd like to help that out and be part of the 1%, make sure to get subscribed and ring that bell to stay notified of future uploads. That said though, this has been your Wavelord. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you're here for the next video, I'll see you next time.